Hello and welcome to another episode of Issues and Insights. I'm Bryce Shoemake from Hardin County Government. And this month, um, we try to keep a theme going on of what's going on um, calendar-wise. And this month is actually Pastor Appreciation Month. So here with me is Jeff Noel, my pastor from Grace Heartland Church. Jeff, welcome to our show today. Thanks for asking me, Bryce. It's a Absolutely. pleasure to be here. Pleasure Absolutely. to be here. And you know... Um, a lot of people that are in our community know about Jeff Noel because you are so involved in not only just our church, but so many other things uh, throughout the community. Um, I know former Chief Tracy Schiller yeah. had you involved in lots of things with Absolutely. the police department and so on. So um, if you would, tell some of our folks a little bit about Jeff Noel. Um, wow, that's uh, that's an interesting. <laughs> I have Here an, we go with I, the Steelers. Yeah, I have I know an, yeah, no, no, that's not a subject I want to go to. But um, I guess you could say, and I, I just actually did a recent post on Facebook. I'm a transplant uh, to Elizabethtown, but um, thankfully so. I I love Elizabethtown. I now have lived here longer than I've ever lived in any one place in my life, and for me, this is now home. I feel like I'm a a Pittsburgh boy uh, who's been transplanted to become a Southern Kentucky boy. And um, I love it here. I love this community. It is a great place. We loved raising our daughter here and uh, she's gone on now to be a veterinarian. And um, so it's just a great place to be. And I could not have in my wildest imaginations um, imagine being able to be a pastor at a church like Grace Heartland. It is it's absolutely everything I could have ever hoped for, desired to be, and love the leadership there, the staff, the people. It just has the, the culture that I get into, which, as you mentioned, um, part of that is um, wanting to, to, to invest into the community. And um, that's just been something that the Lord has placed on my heart a long time ago that, <clears throat> yes, I am uh, employed by and I do ministry at Grace Heartland Church, but thankfully they they get the bigger vision, which is it's not just ministry within the context of our church, but it's, but, but being the church, we are to do ministry to the community that we're a part of. And I think it's cool something you said in yesterday's sermon, because I was actually listening. Good deal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the church is not the building. Correct. That is absolutely right. Um, we are not. Nothing, nothing. I mean, that may be traditionally people's mindset. Exactly. But, but honestly, there's nothing in history and nothing uh, in the biblical context um, that would ever make someone under think that way, if you're really looking at the true meaning of it. I mean, the word church uh, comes from an ancient Greek word, ecclesia, which means to go out or uh, to be on a mission. And uh, the called out ones, nothing about that is about a place. It's about going somewhere. And that's a great segue into what I was going to ask you next. I know that uh, Grace Hartman has a mission. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, there are mission statements up on the on the wall projected. Uh, Any time that that building is in use, that that is projected on the wall there. So that way, when you're daydreaming during the, the I message, can kind of look up there and go, there "Yeah, and I should it. be paying attention to <laughs> what Jeff's saying right now." It, it is. Uh, our mission statement is uh, broken down into a couple of different core statements, which is uh, loving Jesus passionately. That's the, the core of who we are. And then loving one another um, within the context of our church fellowship unconditionally, that we are a family and we have an unconditional love for each other. And then to love people, um, all people, uh, sacrificially. And that that's the essence of who the church was at the very beginning. So that is summed up um, in our overall statement, which is a community of Christ followers on mission to the world. So that really is our vision and our mission, and, and it becomes our overriding principles that drive everything that we do. And, and, in, and in reality, if um, anything that comes up or an idea or a thought, and it doesn't meet that criteria, then it's not something we'll do. It's not what we're about. And you know, one of the cool things that I, I like about you is that um, you get along so well with us, other pastors and mm. other churches. It's not a it's not a competition. Uh, you know, I, I, I think of uh, so, uh, Mike at Southeast Christian or uh, yeah. uh, several of the churches that you've had uh, connections with that you all work so well together to work uh, to help this area. 
You know, I, I appreciate you mentioning that, Bryce. Um, I've been in circumstances and situations where uh, pastors within a local community were very siloed, you know, and they were all kind of doing their own thing. And, and each church had its own, you know, little programming and, and they acted as if they were the only church in town. And that's a very frustrating circumstance and situation. And uh, I read a book several years ago that began to change my understanding of philosophy on that to realize, you know, we're all a part of the same mission. Um, we may have different names and different traditions, um, but for those of us who believe in Jesus and, and are working according to that uh, mandate, um, we're all on the same team. And I think probably the, uh, the example that meant the most to me is to think about it in terms of like troops or platoons in an army. You know, if, if you're facing uh, a common enemy, you don't fight the other troop that wants to help your troop. You work together, right? Even if you have different mission objectives, you're still part of the same team and the same army working against the corporate enemy. And, and that really began to transform me. So um, I have loved being able to reach out to other pastors and say, man, I'm glad you're part of this community. Um, we want to pray for your church because you're part of what we're doing here. Um, thank you for being a part of the mission. How can we work together? And it really is, it's just a lot of fun to work together instead of against each other. And I love my pastor friends. Um, you know, they're great. And man, this last year uh, and a half, we leaned on each other a lot just with communication and, and encouragement. And yeah, we would share ideas. I mean, each church kind of had to respond in their own way. But I think it was more... Uh, uh, kind of a, a peer sharing together because honestly um, none of us had ever been through anything like this before and, and leading a church in the midst of a pandemic uh, you know funny enough we didn't have a class on that in seminary and <laughs> so we were writing our script as we went and, you, you know I, and, and I'm not trying to uh, over abuse Tracy's name but Tracy Schiller when he was oh, yes. chief had many uh, uh, churches get together to talk about um, about things that were going on in the community, especially when we were uh, looking at the country being in such a divide back a few years ago. He brought uh, he did. church leaders in. And it wasn't just church leaders. He created what, what's now called the, uh, the Elizabethtown Unity Team. And um, it was after all the events that happened in Ferguson and um, you know, way before the pandemic where there were these issues of racial tension. And uh, Tracy was a wise, and is still, he still is, <laughs> even though he's not police chief, he is a wise man. And he uh, began to work with Pastor uh, Bishop at that point in time too. And they decided to get out ahead of the game. Thankfully, we never had, had faced anything like that. And what they realized was uh, a huge issue that had happened in some of those communities was that the event took place and there was no communication system to share truth, so to speak, because no one trusted each other. Right. And so Tracy uh, began to uh, a group, um, this unity team, and he invited myself and um, a pastor of the largest Hispanic church in the community, the Imam from the Islamic Center, um, the Catholic priests, um, the president of NAACP, and um, so we tried to involve in that grouping as many different representatives of um, the different cultural centers within our community. And so he invited us together and we created this team. We began to develop relationships. We would eat together. You know, it was fun to go to the Islamic Center and and wow, I mean, it was like a Mediterranean festival, food there and then go to the Hispanic church and they came to Grace Heartland and all that to say, you know, when people sit down and talk to each other, that's when you begin to develop relationships and relationships foster trust. And the point in that group was if we ever had a circumstance and situation, we already had a group of people from different cultural centers around the community who trusted each other. And we, and, and we trusted the police department. And, and Chief Jeremy Thompson has carried on with that. Absolutely. Um, he totally has done that. And um, 
I, I've stepped out of that group. We wanted to kind of change the blood, so to speak. So uh, one of our other pastors is now doing that, Daryl Pepper. Uh, but yeah, that team is still meeting and working. And um, again, the point is just keeping the relationships together. And so talking about Grace Heartland, yes. um, there are several uh, different um, activities that you all have going on that, that uh, go on throughout the year. Uh, we just got through with one. We did, and thankfully we're able to uh, do these in person again, you know, so we went through a long stretch. That was one of the hardest things for our church because, as you well know, we like to be involved in events, uh, both people coming in and us going out. And probably our biggest one in terms of um, people seeing it, in terms of the impact that it has, it's called Grace Unleashed. And the byline is, the church has left the building. And it's just a, it's, it's an amazing day where several projects, usually there's over 30 projects, and it involves between three and 400 people from Grace Heartland. And these are projects that are planned for, prepared for, and um, it's a big one-day event where we'll go and build ramps, uh, we'll um, do landscaping, painting, cleaning, uh, you know, a power washing, whatever it is. Sewing, we don't want to leave Sewing, yes, we, we have a group that does sewing. Interesting projects that they do to find to support missions all over the world, and they will sew things. But anyway, it's just all these things, and it supports so many different groups. And it's just a, it's such a, a cool day to see it, everybody go out and, and do And it's that. volunteer help. Nobody a- gets paid 100%. a dime to do that. Nobody 100%. pays anybody. This is a great And the thing. money's donated towards each of those projects. And, and we have partnered with Habitat um, in the past to find some of the projects. Mm-hmm. So We love partnering, not, not just with churches, but with other not-for-profit organizations. Um, you Silverleaf. Know, Silverleaf. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, sometimes I think there have been uh, times when Christians have pushed back from helping uh, not-for-profit organizations because they've not been particularly Christian. And yet the point is they're doing Christian things. <laughs> so we should be involved with them, whether or not they're a Christian-based organization. That has nothing to do with it. But if they're doing the things that Christ called us to do, then we're in. You right. Know, let's be a part of that. Right. So. No, I, I've done several landscape jobs. Yes, you uh, have. Jobs, uh, you and I don't old. do too many together, though, because it tends to rain it when does. you and I work on projects together. <laughs> <laughs> Several times in a row, as a matter of fact. I don't know whether somebody's telling us something, you know, know. maybe we shouldn't be together. I went, I went inside and painted this year. So. <laughs> but now we've got an, you've got another activity coming up at the Hardin County Fairgrounds. We so. do, and I, I this is a good time to make this announcement so that a lot of people can hear this because... It's called Trunk or Treat, and for several years, you know, Trunk or Treat has had this incredible evolution. It used to be something we just did for our own church family, and then we kind of had the vision, well, let's do this where it's our church family doing this for the community. So it went from about 300, and in a couple of years, it went from about three, went to about 3,000 to 5,000 people. Yeah, and you know, we do have a large church campus, but we can't handle those numbers. So last year, we tried something different. It was a great idea in concept. We did it at Freeman Lake. Uh, and and it, it was like one of those times where it was too successful, and it created a traffic jam all the way back. Um, so great idea, but um, obviously needed tweaking. So this idea, Marty Fulkerson, um, who's on staff and a city councilman, uh, and our previous children's pastor decided, why don't we do this at the fairgrounds? So this year, uh, we are going to be having that at the fairgrounds on Saturday. I believe it's October 20, uh, it's the, it's the, the, the Saturday before um, Halloween. Um, so Sunday the 31st, so that would be... The 20, is it the 26th? 24th would be, so it would be the 23rd. 23rd. So yes. I get the 23rd Give us the just a minute, folks. Give me a minute I, I, on that. I'm yeah. a North Harden graduate, so give me just one minute. I, I, not <laughs> that I love you. North Harden. Don't get me wrong right. there. It takes and me I, a minute. I should know that, but yes, it's October 23rd. And so here's and there's how great it, teachers at North Harden. I want to throw that in there too. So. They are. They are. They have a good football team. Um, and so um, we... Uh, it's at the fairgrounds. It's a ticketed event, but it's free. And so we want you to go online and you can go to our website and you can just click on the uh, trunk or treat uh, and get your, and you can download your, it's a, there's an Eventbrite uh, 
So app. what is the um, website that everybody can go to? It's, just it's go Grace to Hartland. Just Grace, GraceHartland.org. Okay. Um, you can also, if you want to download our app, uh, we have a, a, an app, just the Grace Hartland uh, app and uh, GHC app. And if you download that, there's a tab that you can click on there and it takes you immediately. And the point is get a ticket because um, there's two um, there's two time slots. There's three to five and then there's six to eight. Okay, folks, we'll put that website down at the bottom of the page so you all can see that in the app and you will want to go there to get your ticket because, Jeff, will anybody be admitted if they don't have a ticket? Um, we. I would say no, you know, we're going to try to, to, to stop that from happening. I'm sure people will come and because our name is Grace, I'm sure we're going to try to figure that out. But in reality, we truly, really need you to do that. And um, there, we're by no means sold out, but we're way over a thousand already in terms of people signing up for it. And th the idea is to be prepared for everybody that comes. And that's why we're going to have two uh, time slots from three to five and then six to eight. Now, um, make a note of that because that has changed. We did have it earlier, but there's an event at the fairgrounds that day, and so we needed to push it back. Um, so it's three to five and six to eight. So now, um, will pe I guess people will be parking there on site? They will. You'll come in and park, um, and you will walk through the trunks. Um, and I think that they're working on a possible drive-through section. I'm not going to promise that. I can't. I'm not sure exactly. But the idea is to come in and to park um, and, and to just walk through the, the set of trunks. And there'll be other activities. There's going to be bouncy houses. There will be food trucks. I mean, it's going to be like a festival. And it's at the fairground. So we don't have to worry about backing traffic up and the police department is very thankful for that and so is the mayor so <laughs> <laughs> so now when we say fairgrounds we're talking about the hardin county fairgrounds Correct. that is out on south 31 and it's actually between elizabethtown and glendale on 31w hardin county fairgrounds it's well marked and it's on the right hand side of the road as you're driving south on 31w so that is correct it is easy to find. And you don't have to be a member of Grace Heartland Oh, Church. no, 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 please. No, yeah, this is for the community. This is, this is something, and, and truthfully, this is no longer just a Grace Heartland event. We are sponsoring, or we are partnering with several other. The city is one of our partners, and we're uh, partnering with several other uh, community agencies and to make this happen. And again, it's a partnership with our community and for our communities. So and other churches have participated in this with they, us before They are too. and they have the police department, the fire department, uh, I believe 911 is out there, so you know, your department. EMS. EMS, so um, yeah, it, it's just a, it's a great day and I think you know the timing is always great and the community shows up for this like crazy and it's just a fun time. So October 23rd, Trunk or Treat at the fairgrounds. <laughs> Two different times. Correct. Those times are? They are three to five, six to eight, ticketed event, but it's free. And we'll tell you, we'll put that down at the bottom of the screen, the times and also the website you can go to to get those tickets. And, you know, I want to go back just a second when we talked about Grace Unleashed in the past, talking about working with other churches. Uh, I know Southeast Christian has actually made lunches for everybody that were out working before on Grace Unleashed, correct? They have. They have contributed uh, from the very beginning, actually, the year before they actually moved here, they sent us a huge donation for a project and they got together a bunch of members from Southeast and came down and, and worked together on a project. So we've always had a great relationship with Southeast. Uh, Mike and I are good friends, as we do with First Christian and Severins and Valley Creek and, and you know, St. James. St. James. We, we just want to be the, a friend and a, and a partner with them. But yeah, they, they uh, absolutely are, are partnering with us on that. And uh, this year we didn't do lunches, uh, but yeah, they have in the past paid for our lunches for groups. Yeah, And I know even First Baptist before has had uh, yes. the kids portion of Grace Unleashed. They totally did. They so, totally did. I know there are other things going on uh, throughout the year. We, we or the Thanksgiving meal. I don't. We always have that. a meal on uh, Wednesday night, um, not the Wednesday night, eve of thanksgiving but the prior wednesday night we call it uh we call it thanks unleashed and um we just feel a, a it's a great opportunity uh to reach out to uh 
to the homeless and to those that normally go to Warm Blessings. And so it's kind of a ministry both to them and to Warm Blessings because we like to give Warm Blessings a night off. And we will go and we will transport all the people from, that would normally eat there and bring them over to Grace Heartland. And we just like to love on them and feed them and, and bless them that night and make them a part of our church family. And so, yeah, we've done that. And um, so that's coming up uh, as well. And that partners with Room in the Inn as well. Too, it, then. it does. And Room in the Inn is in a bit of a transition this year. There's still some unknowns. I mean, last year, because of COVID, we ended up moving to a centralized location for Room in the Inn. Room in the Inn is a warming shelter uh, for the homeless uh, that, that they have access to a warm facility. It started off being several churches, uh, we being one of them where you would take a night and you'd be the host and another church would partner with you to make meals and we always partnered with Northside Baptist. And um, last year we moved that to a central location and then we just sent volunteers. Um, this year that location is no longer available so they're in the uh, talking stages of what they're going to do this year. It looks like it's going to flip back to the, um, churches. To the churches again um, and, and be housed there uh, each night. So, yeah, that usually gets started in November um, as the weather starts transitioning and getting colder right. and runs through uh, January. And then, uh, of course, we're getting into my favorite time of the whole year. There it is. It's Christmas. Is that coming up? Bryce, is um, a few days you know, away? I, I would normally know how many days it is. Um, <laughs> a little disappointing. It's in the 90s. Um, <laughs> it may be down to 88, but uh, I know last week it was like 94. So, I mean, not that I count, but yes, or that I have he an app. He starts in July. Yeah, Sunday or that notices. I have an app on my phone that says how many days, hours, <laughs> and minutes it is till Christmas. But yeah. anyhow, uh, I but love Christmas. Yes. So We are going to have... Um, Christmas uh, services this year. We will. We always have a, a, a Christmas Eve uh, celebration and service, um, and um, uh, always look forward to that. You know, and so that will be a part of our schedule. We don't have the time set out yet, but when we do, we will certainly put those on our website. And also the event where we partner with uh, other ages where they can come in and, and uh, purchase items for Christmas for their children at a, at a very much reduced Yeah, cost. Affordable Christmas. Yes. And um, Affordable Christmas is um, an adaptation of what used to be um, the baskets where we, the whole community, again, another one of my favorite days of the year where people from all over the community would come together and we'd converge and we'd get these food baskets and toys and all these things and we take them out to homes which was a wonderful blessing but um, we've kind of modified that this year uh, over the last few years and now local churches will partner um, with the resource officers at local schools and we target specific families within that that realm that have gone through the same channels to say hey we need some help at Christmas and so instead of going out to them uh, these families come um, and they come on a Saturday morning and they've got an appointment and they get to come in and we turn the gym into a shopping center and there are brand new items there and families get to come in and we have a space set up and the children go to another room and they have they have treats and stories and they do that and meanwhile the the, fam the parents and the family are in the gym and they're going through and they're shopping for their kids and they get to choose what they want which makes it so much more personal and we have volunteers that'll be there that meet with each family member and just to establish relationship. It's, it's um, what we did was great. This has made it even better because now we get to have personal contact um, with families and talk to them. And there've been relationships that have developed after that. And uh, I tend to just walk around and cry during the whole thing. <laughs> I know we were together the last time we were able to do this and backpacks and all of our small group was in uh, in one area, so it, it makes it good for everybody. We we have several pastors that are on staff, and uh, they do so much for the community. Hmm. Um, we want to think about them as well, and Absolutely. talk maybe about some of the folks that you have on staff that are that are doing I, so much. I will do that, and I also want to say I, I appreciate you saying Pastor Appreciation Month because I've got to be honest with you. There were years early on in my ministry that October. I kind of looked forward to it because it was a time where people seemed to be nicer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love yeah, Christmas. There, there, you know. there you go. But you know what? Uh, and this is one of the things I love about Grace Heartland. I'll be, I am 100% candidly honest on this. I 
forget that October is a pastor appreciation month. The reason is because Grace Hartland, every month is pastor appreciation month. Uh, they, I have never been a part of a church where I have felt more appreciated. Now it's going to be my time to kind of lose it. Where I felt more appreciated and, and um, I mean, yeah, we have tough times. Every place does. But overall, there's just a spirit of thankfulness and gratitude and appreciation and camaraderie and working together. And so that said, yeah, we have, um, you know, over 14 members on our staff. And so that's a large staff. And um, I am so thankful to be a part of not just a staff that appreciates one another and does our best to work together. And yeah, we've got times where we try to work through issues. But overall, I've never been a part of a team effort where, you know, like for instance, trunk or treat, you know, the whole staff will be out there working on that and, and way out of several of their lanes. But that's one of those all hands on deck projects where we all jump in on and so appreciate each one of those staff members. Incredibly thankful for a team of elders who go over and above to make sure we know we're appreciated. And that's in many different ways. You know, it's not just, you know, yeah, there are times they will do things like an, a monetary gift, but they do far more than that just to say, we appreciate you. And, um, you know, that's not always the case in every situation, but incredibly thankful to be a part of an amazing team. And uh, I'm not just blowing smoke. I mean, it truthfully is a wonderful place uh, to be a part of, and I'm very thankful for that culture. And we're thankful for the other churches in the community and the Absolutely. other pastors. Uh, who, and, who have equally as amazing cultures and teams that they're working with. And we always tell people, hey, um, not everybody is meant for every church. That's why there's so many different churches throughout, throughout Hardin County, uh, throughout Hardin County, throughout Hardin County. Absolutely. And, and so it's, and it's that way because not everybody fits in where they feel like they're comfortable with this congregation or that congregation. And so we want everybody that is watching this show to know that there's many churches, many great churches and many great pastors out throughout our county. And, and, I, and as I'll emphasize, there is only one church. There's several congregations, but there's only one church in Elizabethtown, and we're all a part of that. And I love every one of those congregations, and we pray for each other and work together. and. Yeah, I mean, if you talk to me, I'm going to uh, certainly, you know, I can share the truth about Grace Hartland and that's, uh, but I would always say, you know, this is a great community because of the church that's here. And that's all of those congregations. And man, if you came to Elizabethtown and can't find a congregation that you can plug into, um, then I'd really wonder what you're looking for because <laughs> there's some amazing congregations And here. Jeff, I knew our time would go by fast and it has. Uh, but we want to thank all you pastors out there and all the uh, uh, the congregations that are throughout our big community. And we just thank you for everything that you do on a daily basis to take care of your flock. So, Jeff, thanks again for joining us thank today. You, and thank you for watching us here on Hardin County Education and Community TV as we keep you informed on what's going on throughout this big community that we call, uh, call Hardin County, but more importantly, what's going on in your child's life in the Hardin County school systems. And we'll keep you up to date on that. Hey, have a great season. Um, enjoy your Halloween. Be safe. Uh, wear more than one mask. And make sure that you're using that hand sanitizer. This, uh, this variant that's going around is extremely dangerous. But thank goodness we have so many people that are vaccinated and uh, staying free of this. So thank you. Stay safe. Stay informed. And stay tuned to Hardin County Education Community TV. Bryce Shoemate from Hardin County Government.